Step five, making a network. So, so far we have considered how to create entanglement between neighboring nodes, so link level entanglement, how to extend this with entanglement swapping to end-to-end -to -end entanglement, so entanglement between nodes that are not physically connected directly. Now let's consider what it takes to actually create a network. So there are a few problems, but the two main problems that we will consider in this step are routing, so how do you direct traffic through a network, and also multiplexing and resource man man management. So let's say that we've got some uh, complicated network like this. And we wish to communicate from this point over here all the way down to this point over there. The job of a network is to establish a connection between those two uh, nodes. In quantum networks, we wish to establish an entangled pair between those two nodes such that we can either use it for some uh, quantum key distribution or for teleportation or for any other purposes uh, we may uh, wish to consider. So how does the network do, know how to do it? Well, it has to first content with the first problem that's routing. How does it pick a particular path where it uh, performs entanglement swapping? Well, let's consider a simpler case of the following network. So, let's say that we want to communicate from A to E. We can see that there are three different possible paths that uh, the network can take. It can establish uh, an entangled pair between A and E by performing entanglement swapping at B. Or, it can do it uh, by entanglement swapping between D while it's sharing link-level entanglement between DE and AD or it can go via the node C and perform entanglement swapping there as well as D. So first it needs to establish link level entanglement between AD, DC, CE, and then perform entanglement swapping on the qubits at C and entanglement swapping on the qubits at D in order to establish end-to-end -end entanglement between A and E. What we need uh, in order to evaluate which way is best is to look at the cost that it takes uh, to establish a link level entanglement and then how to combine these costs in order to establish the cost for the entire path, so for the entire end-to-end -end entanglement. So one possible way of uh, evaluating the link level entanglement is uh, to evaluate the cost of establishing a link level entanglement is seconds per bell pairs at a threshold fidelity. So what does that mean? As we said, in order to establish entanglement, let's say, between A and B, we have to first um, uh, make the uh, quantum memories that are sitting at A emit a photon, and quantum memory sitting at B to emit a photon. And then they have to meet, let's say, in the middle, if we are uh, considering the memory interference memory setup, where the photons can be measured in a bell, sta bell state basis, and that will uh, entangle the memories at A and at B. But these photons will get lost in the fiber, they will get attenuated. So uh, this procedure is not deterministic. Sometimes we get lucky and uh, the link level entanglement can be established quickly. Sometimes we have to wait a little bit longer. So the more lossy the channel is, the more lossy the fiber is, the more we are, the, we are expected to wait a little bit longer for the bell pairs to, be, uh, to get established. And in order to make this comparison fair, we set a fixed fidelity, that we are looking to establish bell pairs at a given fidelity. And this is usually dictated by, by the protocol that we want to, uh, that we want to run, or for, by the end-to-end uh, -end distance between the nodes A and E. So this gives us a good, good uh, uh, idea for a cost of, established, of establishing the link level entanglement. Now, how do we combine these costs for each individual links in order to know the full cost of establishing end-to-end -end entanglement over a longer path? Well, one possibility is to use Dijkstra's shortest path first algorithm. So what we can do is we can sum the costs for the path A, B, E, in order to obtain a good estimate of the full total cost of establishing end-to-end uh, -end entanglement. Or we can do it for ADE and ADCE. This way, uh, the network can know what's actually best. 
in, and it will be able to deliver the end-to-end uh, -end entanglement uh, more efficiently. And by knowing which path is most efficient, of course, it, it knows how to route information and establish end-to-end -to -end entanglement. So the next problem that we have to deal with is multiplexing. And that can be demonstrated by considering the following scenario. We've got a bunch of nodes over here that are all connected to a node E. And here on the right side, again, we've got the following tree that's all uh, leading to node F. So let's say that A is trying to communicate with K. Well, we can use uh, link level entanglement between EF, FK, and AE, and then apply entanglement swapping at E, entanglement swapping at F, in order to obtain end-to-end -end entanglement between AK. But what if uh, different two nodes also are trying to communicate? Let's say that B wants to establish end-to-end -end entanglement with node J. They have to go through uh, through the link EF. This creates contention on the EF link. So the network needs to know how to handle uh, such um, requests where a single link has to be shared between uh, two different pairs, between pair AK and BJ. Furthermore, we can have more net, uh, network nodes trying to establish end-to-end -end entanglement. We, in this case, we can have CH. C and H. Or we can even have the case where we have uh, node G trying to communicate with node K. And this creates contention on the following link, on the link FI. And that the network needs to know how to handle such requests. In this lesson, we have seen uh, the four requirements for building a quantum network. So first we started at the bottom with a basic building block and that's how to establish entanglement between two neighboring nodes of a network, meaning establishing link level entanglement and how to handle photon losses. Next, we saw how we can establish end-to-end -end entanglement, meaning uh, entanglement between nodes which are, don't share a direct physical link using entanglement swapping. Then we talked about how to handle errors, how to uh, improve the quality of our distributed state. Uh, namely, we introduced the protocol of purification. And finally, in this last step, we uh, gave you a little bit more idea what it takes to build a network, that there are other considerations that we have to take into account, such as routing, multiplexing, and resource management. But this is all just building a single network. Quantum internet is a different beast entirely. Quantum Internet is a network of quantum networks. So that we will discuss in the coming lessons.